Okay, so this is a review of uh, what we did in class. So this is basically going through solving uh, simple 1D finite element system equations with essential boundary conditions, okay? So we're talking about solving KD equals F with some uh, essential boundary conditions. At some point, we're going to set di equal to some prescribed value di. And in this case, I'm only going to really consider homogeneous ones, so where that's zero. And so we went through the theory last time, but since I kind of rushed through the MATLAB stuff kind of quick, let me just solve this in MATLAB. So let's just take this as our little case problem. So let's do a two-element, three-node problem. We'll put a force on here of P, node 1, node 2, node 3, element 1, element 2. And uh, we'll assume that the rod is uniform. Oops. And of length L. So each element is L on 2. So the spring stiffness of each element, K1 and K2, is equal and it's going to be 2AE on L, where L is the total length, all right? So this gives us the following system of equations. 2AE on L, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, times D1, D2, D3, equals the reaction force at node 1, which is unknown, 0, oops, and then P at node 3. All right? So in this case, the unknowns are D1, sorry, D2, D3, and then R1, the reaction force at node 1. Okay, so we talked about this in class, so just real quickly, we're going to remove the first equation and instead use the equation, in this case, we're going to use a new equation 2, I'm sorry, new equation 1, and it's going to be 2AE on L times D1 plus 0 times d2 plus 0 times d3 equals 0, okay? Because here we know that d1 equals 0, all right? So I put the 2AE on L just because it's out here, all right? So this is the original stiffness matrix, here's the D matrix, and then here's the original force, right? So this then gives me the following modified stiffness matrix. Right. So now I get the following system. So I do that substitution. 2AE on L. 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1. D1, D2, D3. And now the right-hand side for this equation is 0, so we have to put the 0 here. Don't keep the R1. The other two equations remain the same. So this is now our modified stiffness matrix, and this is our modified force. Okay? So this is now no longer singular. Okay? So, so the inverse of that matrix exists. All right, so let's solve it in MATLAB now, okay? So that's what we're going to start off with. That's our system, all right? So let me go back here, and this will be MATLAB, right? So in MATLAB, the way to solve this is just to actually enter in uh, manually the, um, the original stiffness matrix and force, and then we'll modify those and then solve. Okay, so the stiffness matrix K, oops, let me get a little, is going to be 
Uh, remember to enter a matrix or a vector, they're the same. We use the, the square brackets. Each row is separated by a semicolon. So the first row would be, uh, well actually first let's define AE on 2L. So let's define K, that's the element stiffness, let's just call that a thousand. So this is, you know, 2AE on L, right? Let's assume that this is 2AE two, two over L, right? So we're just going to define that. All right, now I can define the global stiffness matrix as uh, K, that's that constant, times uh, 1, minus 1, 0, new row, minus 1, 2, minus 1, new row, 0, minus 1, 1. All right, so that's the stiffness matrix. And then we can enter the force vector in. Now, I can't really enter the um, original force vector. The only thing I really have is the modified force vector because I don't know the reaction force. So we can trivially add that in. That becomes... Um, 0, 0, and let's just put uh, 200 as, as the force P, right? And so it's a column vector, right? And obviously here you can see that uh, if I take the determinant of K, it's 0, it's singular, I won't be able to invert it, okay? So now we want to modify it so that this first row, instead of being... Um, uh, 1,000 minus 1,000 zero, we need to change this to be 1,000 and this to be zero. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I can either address that first row, which is going to be um, first row, all columns. You can see that's the first row. Uh, and then I can reassign that, okay? So I'm going to use uh, the original stiffness matrix to find the reaction forces. So let's to find a new matrix, K mod, this is the modified stiffness matrix, set that equal to the original stiffness matrix, and now let's modify that one. So let's modify the first row and set that equal to uh, 1, 0, 0. Or I guess technically I should put it 1,000. Because I said I was going to use uh, 2 A E on L, but you know. Whether I use 1 or 1,000, it's still being set to 0, so it's just any coefficient here would work. All right. Now, uh, the determinant of this is no longer 0, All right. so I can take the inverse of it. And now I can simply solve for D. So now I want to solve for, for uh, D. Uh, you could do D equals the inverse of K mod times F mod. And that'll work. The problem is that's computationally inefficient. You typically don't explicitly solve for the inverse of k. You usually use some other decomposition method to solve linear systems of equations. So in MATLAB, it kind of does all that stuff under the covers for you. But the way of doing that is um, k mod divided by f mod. All right. So if you look at this, it kind of looks like you're dividing f mod by k mod, which is kind of algebraically what you would do. But you use this left slash, and that's the correct one for dealing with uh, solution of column vectors. Okay, the right, the forward slash is what you would use for row vectors. But we usually have column vectors, so this is the form we use. And there you go. There's your solution for the displacement. All right. Now, if you wanted to find the reaction forces, remember the reaction forces. We get simply by taking the unmodified stiffness matrix and multiplying it with the solution. And there's the reaction force, and here you can see that uh, the reaction force at node 1 is obviously negative the applied force, so you get some forces equal to 0, okay? But it's automated here, okay? So that's it, and uh, uh, remember the other way that you could do this is using that built-in function that I supplied the FE solve, okay? But I won't go through that now since I did that in class, but you can tinker around with that and get that to work, okay?